Hello, welcome along to another edition of the Tyler Send Pub Chat Extra. I'm Dan Wimbush, and joining me for this episode is Mark Mayer. Hello. And Mr. Alan West, Westy. Hello, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch this week's show. The topic, as you can see from the bottom of your screen, is when football and life collide. Now, there is a shameless reason I'm picking it for today. It is, uh, we're recording this on the 18th of April, which is the anniversary of Reading's FA Cup semi-final with Arsenal, which I may have mentioned it once or twice in the show. <laughs> I had to miss as uh, I was picking up one of these on my finger. I was getting married, so I uh, had to miss the game. Of course, you don't regret that for a second, do you? Not one bit. Not no. yet. Not yet. No, <laughs> no. If, we, if we'd won... We might be talking to different though. We lost anyway, so... No, um, so it's one of those occasions where life just got completely in the way. It was one of those things, the whole run-up, I was thinking, this can't happen, this can't happen. It was only when I think we got to the Derby game in the fifth round and I actually started looking at the at when the games were and I was like, it's not going to happen, is it? I thought when Yakubu scored, we was destined for good things. That was more unbelievable than us getting to the semis. Yeah, Even then. That's, that's the sign, isn't it? It's like I, du- uh, du- divine intervention. It was. So. I had that get out of jail free card because the semi-finals were the Saturday and the Sunday. So I was like, okay, I'm getting married on the Saturday. We're, we're not going away on, on, on a mini moon until late on the Sunday. So I could go to Wembley. And then, of course, the TV companies went, nah, we'll put you on Saturday. Sorry, mate. You must have listened to the show. Just purposely do it so you can yeah, play, I, mate. Yeah, absolute vendetta. But, um, gents, any stories from the two of you about when football and life have, have collided in tough decisions you've had to make? But me personally, I think, not a tough decision, but we had an 18th birthday party for the Fulham game. I think I mentioned it at the time. And I give my ticket away begrudgingly because I didn't really want to go. But I thought, I better go. It was her family. So I thought, I don't want to upset her too much. <laughs> so I went. And then on the way back, I was coming back quite early, at 9.30. I turned the radio on. And I hear AD Williams saying, if you've been at the game today, then please ring in. I thought, it can't be finished yet. And it took me about five, ten minutes to realise that the game was abandoned. So I thought, <laughs> thank God for that. But the main person, that, again, my dad, I've said this lots of times on earlier shows, that my dad was on Fox Sports News about a year ago. They come to our house. It was great because we thought it was a wind up, but they turned up. Big fan, Fox Sports News, all the cameras, light, and everything. So, because my dad went to football on his wedding day, so what he'd done was he went to the registry office with a fixture list. Mm. He walked down there. He checked what dates were available, and all of them were on Reading home games. And he got married at the registry office at the end of Tyler's Road. Oh, okay, yeah. So all the games were on. All the games, all the matches were taken for home games when the kid got married. So he said, "Oh, I could do this one as long as you do it early." So he said, okay, so my dad got married, walked down the Tyler's Road, not with my mum, he left her. He walked down, <laughs> walked down the Tyler's Road with his best man, his dad, in his suit, went and watched Reading, play Sheffield United. It was 1980. Uh, it was first and second at the time, so he wasn't going to miss that one. Went to the football and then went back to the reception afterwards. And my mum was there waiting for him. Did they win? They won. Yeah, they won. And they're still married, so he must have oh, done something right. <laughs> and the Walsall um, playoff match, my dad was in Germany with my mum. And he flew back a day early no left, way. To get, left to get a flight on his own. So maybe he's a bit of a male chauvinist, but <laughs> he always said to me when his key said, start as you mean to go on. And that's exactly well, what he He set the set tempo. Set precedent, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I've now, I've lost all Yeah, so you've, fi- you've like, finished already. Absolutely. Mark, what about you? Um, the closest I probably got is the fact that when I went to uh, Cardiff for university, I was thinking like, brilliant. Reading playing Cardiff, just down the road, really simple. Um, but the season that we got promoted was the season I went and Cardiff got relegated. So I managed to have the first year Reading in the Premiership, Cardiff in the Championship. Second year we managed to swap over quite conveniently and had Cardiff in the Premiership and Reading in the Championship. So I had basically a Premier League team on my doorstep when Reading were the Championship and then it swapped over. Third year accident, incidentally, they were both in the Championship but I had tickets to go to a Slipknot gig on the day they were playing... Um, what a choice. They were playing Cardiff away, and my mate who was going with me is a Man United fan who wasn't very interested in diverting the reason for him coming down to Cardiff. Oh, well, there you go. How I mean, I, I went through it as well. I was at university in the northwest for three years, and then another one. Yeah, you uh, missed a great deal of games, didn't you? Because he wasn't, he was on yeah, the I remember absolutely. That. And away, and then I went down to Cornwall for, for another year of study, and so missed it again. And it's mm. it's sort of that dilemma of how much do I spend, how much can I spend coming back to see Reading. And yeah. you feel you feel guilty because you can't come back for every game. But I had almost the opposite scenario of you because when we were in the Premier League, I was in the North West, I got to a lot of away games. And the best one for me 
was uh, my flatmate was a Bolton season ticket holder. So I used to go to the odd game with him at a loose end because his dad couldn't make it or whatever. But he used to go up with, um, they had a local supporters club. So I got a bit pally with them. And then when Reading went to Bolton in the Premier League, I went to the game on the Bolton supporters coach. Oh dear. And, I, and then we won 3-1. And I had to come back on that same <laughs> supporters coach. And I, I, I think it's the quietest I've ever kept myself. Did they all know that you were Reading? Yes, man? they did. Right. Yeah, I was sat there in my Reading shirt. <laughs> I mean, I was slightly friendly no, with them, but I was just no kind of like, do I, do, do I gently mock them? Are they going to be annoyed with me? I sort of trying to have you ever been in the, have you been in the home end as an away fan or vice versa? Yes, I was in the home, I wasn't a, a, a scary club by any means, but I was at Wickham. We went... Um, fierce, fierce animals Yeah, ter- there. terrifying. Mm-hmm. I think they were so terrifying that Timmy Mallet was there that day. <laughs> That's how hardcore they were. Did he bring Lead Pinky Punky chance. with him? I thought he'd have had his hammer with him, but probably he would have been ejected, you know? <laughs> but yeah, so we went to Wickham and they asked us at the gate if we were Wickham fans. And we said, oh no, we were just working in the area. We've come to watch a match. And he's like, okay. So he said to me, if, if you jump up, if I see you jump up when Reading score, you'll be out. So he said, yeah, fine. So I uh, don't anyone remembers this game. Sammy Igo scored about the 87th minute to equalise. Right. And uh, I, I, you know, as you just when you're in a home end, you just go to jump. You think, oh, I'm in the home end, but it was such a late goal that you can't not yeah. react. And as I went to jump up, the whole stand jumped up. There was all Reading fans. It was like littered with like odd Wickham fan here and there, but otherwise it was all Reading fans in it. Mark, have you ever gone undercover? Um, I had to go undercover for the Arsenal League Cup game uh, this season. Actually, I went with an Arsenal fan. So my sister's boyfriend's an Arsenal fan. So uh, that was a diplomatic sense of going to a game where Reading did so little in the game that it was actually really easy. There was no problems whatsoever keeping quiet there. <laughs> I was just quite amused by the Arsenal fans complaining the whole time. My one of my favourite stories is um, we went to Northampton when we we're in Div Two, and uh, when, when my dad Wim Senior, and it was and it was the first time I'd ever sat in the home end as an away fan and I must have been about I don't know 12, 13 and he said to me the whole time he was like whatever you do you know, when we score don't jump up you know, you've know, got to keep yourself calm you know, we, we, you know, we don't want to give, give the game away or anything so I was like okay, okay. You know, really sort of sitting on my hands going like I don't want to do anything I don't want to give anything wrong of course Grant Brebner scores red in he's up yes <laughs> and I'm just like Dad. I can't believe you've just done that. Sit down, man. Not only, not just because you've done it, but because you've spent the whole game telling me not to. I think my dad took one of my friends, um, he's a bit older than me, he was about 15 at the time, it was a night game at Chelsea in the shed end, and I was in the wrong end, my dad was in the wrong end, and in the, in the 80s, the shed end at Chelsea was not the sort of place no. you want to go as a home fan, or away fan, sorry. So we was it was a League Cup game that um, Colin Gordon scored two goals in, we lost 3-2, but we went through on aggregate and there's two real late goals and they managed to not jump up for the first one and my dad said to him look whatever you do you stay in your seat no matter what happens and he got carried away because it was a real late goal Colin Gordon scores he jumped up and he said this big hand come over softly <laughs> grabbed me by the shoulder and just went sit down and he goes I didn't move <laughs> for the next seven minutes till the game was finished didn't clap just walked out so I was terrified but yeah so other than that no what's the, what's the longest journey the two of you have done watching Reddit? I went to Tranmere. I think that's pretty far. For the playoffs. Yeah, for the playoffs. Um, been all over. I've been to Northampton when they had three sides when they used to play cricket there. Oh, as well. the county ground. Yeah, because we'd just pull up in the t- um, deck chairs and sit along the bit where they used to play cricket at. So, yeah, I've been there. But, yeah, I've been all over, but I haven't been that far. I think Tranmere's probably about the first. Mark Liverpool. I would say that football has often supplemented what would otherwise be like we wouldn't have done anything. So, when we play Torquay in the League Cup about five, six years ago. And Raziak scored. Raziak scored in the 120th minute and the, the wall fell down in the Torquay away end. So like three people <laughs> needed hospital <laughs> treatment or something Unbelievable. like that. Unbelievable. Um, very typical like League 2 scenario, like Conference South now basically. But um, that was a nice little three-day trip into Dor- uh, Devon. Sorry. Um, and also Newcastle away. I've done it once on the coach, uh, up there and back in the same day, and that is wow, like a day of your life mm. gone. To a, for a three 0 defeat as well. I think someone would be sat at home just saying, oh, "I went to South Korea to watch Reading play." And yeah, gonna be I've seen I've seen a, a yeah, shirt be before that. of someone wearing that, and it's got the peace cup on the back, and I was like, well, "That's impressive." I think the worst uh, was for me was during the last promotion season in 2012. I went up to Doncaster during the running on a Tuesday night. And we we drew one all. It's a woeful side, um, and didn't get home. It's when you get home at like you pull into the stadium car park at like two three in the morning, just like after. A what beat. am I doing with my life? Really, <laughs> yeah. do I need to do this? And that's why I've got so much respect for people like Handbags Harris 
He went home and away. And you see, we've got some fantastic followers on Twitter that, that go those extra miles. They go to the Middlesbrough's. They go to the Everywhere, yeah. Sunderland's on a Tuesday night. And those people are just fantastic. Huddersfield. Even at, on Saturday when we played Rotherham, they only had a couple of hundred in the way end. But coming all the way down to Reading, when your team's already been relegated and you've got one point away all season. Yeah, I, I, I was quite amazed. that the, They had a steward each as well, pretty much, didn't they? But Rotherham yesterday, turning out like they did, and we're all credit to them because even if they see a win, at the end of the day, does it really matter, you know? Yeah. I think the other thing is, have you ever been to a, a football match that wasn't Reading? Like a proper league game, not like England yeah. or anything like that? Yeah, I've been to, as I said, when I was up there, I, I went to a couple of Bolton games. Uh, I went to see Man United play Fulham. Uh, and I think I, I, I just had family in Coventry. I think I saw Coventry play someone once. I can't remember who they're playing. Yeah, I've seen Birmingham versus Hereford in the League Cup, like second round back in like 2008 or something. Because like a, a, yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of family up in Birmingham. But that makes it quite easy as well because if you have family in Birmingham, you can drive up and see them on the way or drop the mum off or something there and then carry on up to Wigan or somewhere else. Football's weird though, isn't it? Because uh, I mean, you've been to a lot of neutral games. I've been to one neutral game that was a league match and that was it was a first division game it was Wimbledon versus Watford and the only reason I went is because Reading didn't have a game that day yeah. because there was an odd amount of teams in the league for some reason and Trevor Senior just signed for him so we went to watch Trevor Senior basically my dad tells lots of stories to me he used to go and watch all the other local sort of teams when he was sort of a teenager in early 20s bachelor lifestyle he said if Reading weren't at home he'd go out picking up women well, he said down at Crystal Palace picking up yeah, women exactly, yeah, <laughs> absolutely going down to the wreck at Aldershot <laughs> I'll tell you what mate, it's a hot spot that so yeah he said he would go watch like Aldershot uh, Oxford just to watch a game of football but I think we're in a different era now where there's so much football you can see yeah. that you don't have to go to the games anymore. And we're a bit lucky as Reading fans as well now that we've seen Premier League football mm. for our own team and things like that. So any other stories of football and life colliding? Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. I think there's been quite a few situations of uh, skipping school, like leaving out early. I remember I left school early to go to uh, staying the, school kids. The, yeah, the, the Everton away <laughs> FA Cup. Truant aware. <laughs> it was the Everton. We won one nil. Matt Bill scored in the FA Cup away at Everton. Yes, and um, I remember we'd we'd have like we'd have four periods of the five period day, and I was like, oh, I'm up home now to some of my mates. I said, oh, why are you going? I was like, oh, I'm going to Everton to the game. They, they were quite impressed. I'm not sure. Whoever was maybe teaching me fifth period was impressed, but they never found out as far as I'm aware. <laughs> Until now. <laughs> I had a huge row with my boss once when I was 16. I used to work in a news agency before I left school, and I used to work in a news agency. He asked me to work Saturday, and I said, I'll work till two. And I used to work in Four Boys, which was in the Midway Precinct, so yes. I used to be able to work, walk from there. And he said, I need you to stay until five. And I said, Well, I'm going to football. And he said, If you go now, don't expect to have a job tomorrow. I said, see you then. <laughs> and you just didn't go back? No, I'll come back next day. It was fine. Oh. <laughs> em- em- empty threat. It was an empty threat, <laughs> yeah. There you Excellent. Go. Well, um, I said, those are some of our anecdotes over the years. So we're trying to make the show just a bit of fun, a bit of something different from, from what we usually talk about in the in the podcast and the post and the pre-game show. So if you've got topics and things like that and you want to chip in with your own stories, please get in touch with us via the tilestend at gmail.com. More than welcome to take on topics. It's nice just being able to to kick back and make it like a proper pub chat. Yeah, and I'm sure yeah. that people out there must have their own stories. Yeah, I loved it. What things that you've done, the lengths you've gone to, I'm sure there are some people. What one more for me before I go? Burnley semi final, playoffs. Again, it was when I was in Cornwall and I, and I had a really important lecture the next day and there was no way I could drive to and from the game. So what I did was I got a sleeper train. There's oh. a sleeper train that goes from London to Cornwall. And it went, went that night. So I spent the... I had been trudging back to Reading Station, sitting on this sleeper train. I think it took about five, six hours Was to that get like to there. Penzance or something like that? Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I got off at Truro and just sitting there and you think couple's gone and everything's gone. And <laughs> it's one of those situations where you have so much time to sit and think. <laughs> it's like the, the journey's back from a long away game when you've mm-hmm. lost and nobody really knows what to say for a while. Silent. And you don't even have 606 on because you don't want to hear it. <laughs> Especially playoff finals are the worst for that. Yeah, dreadful. I remember BBC Radio Barks were just playing Always Look on the Bright Side after the Bolton game. It switched off. Yeah. I honestly don't think I remember what I did that night of the Swansea playoff final. It was just a blank in my memory. After they scored the fourth goal, it's, it's gone. I can't remember. I just, I, the one that sticks in my mind is, is the, the Bolton one because I was oh. so young. 
And and I remember they they still had an open top parade. Do you remember this? Yes. And it was pissing it down with rain. Well, an open top parade for fin- for losing the playoff. Final. Yes. Yeah. Do you know the work? Well, there's a lot of things that were bad about that day, but it was a great day up until the end of the match, obviously. But worst thing was we used to go on the rules rendezvous all the time. Yeah. But Dad was quite well known in there. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and they had a party all arranged and everything was sorted for everyone to come back and have a good time. And like, we didn't bother in the end. And apparently there was about five people still oh. upstairs. You know what I mean? You couldn't even bring yourself. It was all it's so set up to be such a wonderful day and end up being an absolute disaster. Well, you know, it so, won't be long until we have another one of those stories to tell. Absolutely, we're all congregating that little uh, what was it area at the back of the east stand. But you know what? I don't think anything can hurt that bad. Even Swansea, when we got beat off, wow, they were the better side at the end of the day. I could take that on the chin. But that Bolton game, that's I still want to have a cry about it now. It's still the worst thing I've ever seen. That's witness. Yeah, it's my in very very first season watching the club, and that that's the moment that my football innocence was shattered. Because up until that point, I thought it's only good. Reading, win. Win. Reading always win in the end. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, and I was still sat there. It's like a Marvel comic. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> Reading man saves the day. And I was just sat there thinking, but we've lost. Like, do we get like a second chance? Or, and, and it took me a good few years. Obviously, we then we were awful for like three or four years after that. Yeah. I was just thinking, I've peaked. <laughs> such <laughs> a crime. I still, I still think about it a lot. It's such a crime, that was. <laughs> I, every time I see or hear Jason McAteer, I think you cheat. Yeah. Cheat, cheat, and when um, it's like when when Alan Stubbs gets sacked or something like that, or Coyle, I just think deserve that. Yeah, that's, that's you that. deserve it. <laughs> so again, that's when football and life are still collided. I've got grudges against people I've never met. Yeah, <laughs> Brian Laws, I hate as well. I know we've gone off the subject. Okay. I think like people like you generally hate Brian Laws. I think he's a football parasite. I don't know how he Whoa. gets a job in football. I don't Whoa. know how he gets a job in football. Look at his record. How does he get a job? Didn't realise we'd be ending this pub chat with a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Tasty bit of of course, it's just my opinion, not the opinion <laughs> yeah. of the show. In- indeed, and uh, Westy will be replaced next week by Brian Laws. Who, <laughs> we, we, if you're listening, Brian, and you want to come on and defend yourself, uh, we're really promising the promising interview we had lined up there, wasn't it? Do you know? It turned. It turned well, last time we played it, I can't remember who was in charge at the time. Probably Scott or we, Burnley. We was playing them. Yeah, probably Burnley. He was Burnley in the playoff semi. And he turned out he had a bright red. Brand new Mercedes or BMW, something like that. It was a real nice car. Are you going to say something you did incriminate in here? Cause no, so, no, 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 no. And he had like his personal number plate, and I thought, how are you getting away with it? He is living a calm <laughs> life. He must have made a deal with a devil, that bloke, I reckon. <laughs> Yeah, so Brian, if you want to come on and defend yourself against <laughs> making deals with Satan, uh, you know the place to come. Anyway, I can think of no better place to wrap up what will possibly be our last episode. <laughs> but pen, probably the best. Pen, pen, pen <laughs> various high. legal action from Westy <laughs> there. Uh, anyway, as mentioned a few minutes ago, get in touch. Let us know your footballing memories. It'd be great. You know, we'll, uh, we'll recount them. Um, and if you've got any topic suggestions, you knew, know where to go. But gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me on this week's show. It's all right. We'll, uh, we'll be back with another episode, hopefully next week. In the meantime, check out thetilestend.com. Support us. Go to patreon.com forward slash thetilestend. Chip in a few quid. And maybe we can buy a, se- a second camera angle. Hey, who knows? Yeah, absolutely. The sky-, the sky pad in there. That's what we need. It's a little yeah, dwarf yeah. on ours. We, we, we will do some sky pad analysis. If you, I that think, would be good. I think yeah. they cost about 20 grand. Well, nearly there. Yeah, so <laughs> just get your hand in your pocket, buy a few more Tyler Stem mugs, and we'll get there. Anyway, that wraps up for us. Thanks very much, and we'll speak to you soon.